phases involved in the conduct of polygraph tests. There are four phases in the conduct of polygraph tests. Number one, we have initial interview. Second, we have pre-test interview. Third, we have actual tests. And fourth, we have post-test interview. Initial interview is conducted by the polygraph examiner to obtain pertinent information, particularly the facts of the case, to the investigator. Take note that test questions are formulated by the polygraph examiner based from information obtained from the investigator. And general facts, theories, and suspicions are not enough basis for polygraph tests. Question formulation depends greatly upon detailed and accurate information regarding all the available facts. During the initial interview, the investigator on the case should brief the examiner of the facts pertaining to uh, background information, specifically uh, previous police records and verified facts which the subject denies, exact amount of money or specific articles stolen, exact type, make, of firearm, weapon or tool used in the commission of the crime, exact place, date, and time when the crime occurred, unusual aspects of the offense or any odd, strange, or obscene acts committed at the crime scene. Known facts pertaining to the suspect's actions and movements immediately preceding or after the incident. Facts indicating a connection between victims, suspects, and witnesses. Unpublicized facts of the offense known only by the victim, the offender, and the investigator. Results of the laboratory tests conducted like DNA, blood type, firearm identification, and the like. Pre-test interview is conducted by the polygraph examiner to condition or prepare the subject for the actual test. This will last for 20 to 30 minutes. The examiner discusses with the subject the test issue and how the test will work. Review the test questions that will be asked during the test and assess the subject's emotional and physiological suitability to undergo the uh, polygraph test. This stage okay, will also be used to explain the rights of the subject and also to ask for his consent. So this uh, particular uh, phase is where the subject will be asked to sign the waiver as a sign of his willingness to undergo the test. Prior to the conduct of polygraph examination, the following considerations are taken into account. The subject must refrain from smoking at least two hours prior to the test. Should avoid taking medication for at least two days prior to the examination. The subject should not be hungry. The subject must refrain from consuming alcoholic beverages for at least 12 hours prior to the actual test. And the subject should not be suffering from physical or emotional abuse. The subject should calm down and relax. If the female subject is pregnant or having menstruation, the test will not be undertaken. The subject should not wear tight apparels or clothing as this may cause inference in the test results and the subject should have at least five hours of sleep before the examination. Before the actual polygraph examination is administered on the subject, the examiner must undertake the following necessary preparations. One, 
the appraisal of the subject's constitutional rights to obtain the subject's concern to undergo the polygraph examination three take notes of the subject's personal data fourth advise subjects involvement about the case fifth evaluate subjects psychological preparedness and lastly determine subjects suitability to undergo the test the actual test this is the state wherein the component parts of the polygraph are actually installed on the body of the subject subjects physiological responses are recorded as the subject answers a set of questions reviewed earlier the post-test space wherein examiner reviews test data obtain and interprets the polygraph chart an interview is conducted when the subject indicates innocent response while interrogation is undertaken if symptoms of deception are indicated by the result of the actual polygraph test